Hello everybody, welcome to my Witcher 3 Rune Raid Enchanting Guide. This Rune Raid Enchanting was introduced with the Hearts of Stone expansion and you can start enchanting your weapons and armor after you finish the enchanting startup cost quest and then up the upper middle fast travel point you'll be able to find the uh, Rune Raid and uh, he'll actually require you to pay uh, 5000 crowns for the first level of enchantment and you will need an additional 10,000 crowns to allow uh, him to enchant uh, for level 2 and the level 3 enchantment will be possible if you pay him another 15,000 crowns. Altogether it's an investment of 30,000 crowns which is not cheap the good thing is that enchanting won't cost you anything, but you will need uh, glyphs or rune stones uh, to create the enchanting. And those are not cheap. Level 1 enchantment will require lesser glyphs or lesser rune stones, always three pieces. And the medium um, level 2 enchantment will require normal rune stones and normal glyphs and level 3 enchantment will require a greater gr three greater glyphs or three greater rune stones you can only enchant swords that have three upgrade sockets and you can only enhance armor that has also three upgrade sockets if your armor or weapons do not have three sockets Unfortunately, you can add sockets at the rune rate, which will cost you between 300 till around 1500 per socket. While weapons can always have free sockets, only the chest armor can have free sockets. Gloves, trousers or boots can have only two or even less sockets. Which means only weapons or chest armor can be rune rate enchanted because you need three sockets for an enchantment. Every enchantment requires different glyphs or different rune stones, which you can find in the world in chests or from monsters, or you can buy them at uh, merchants or this rune right, and you can also craft them from ingredients or uh, lesser glyphs and rune stones. Now I will introduce the nine different enchantments for your sword. First up is Placation, a level 1 enchantment and if you reach the maximum level uh, number of adrenaline points, which is free, the adrenaline points will steadily decline until they reach zero and this will last 30 seconds, 10 seconds per one adrenaline point and uh, during that 30 seconds you will have higher vitality and stamina regeneration and also accelerated toxicity decline. Your stamina regeneration will improve by 18 points per second and your vitality regeneration will improve by around 75 per second. Now if you have uh, free adrenaline points and the uh, um, placation will kick in and you will glow green during that time. Remember, if you use up your adrenaline point, for example by using rent uh, as an attack, um, the placation effect will be shortened by the number of adrenaline points you use. Overall, I do not find this enchantment great, because you need three adrenaline points to start it, and it will, it will use up your adrenaline points, which are otherwise very useful. Next up is the level 1 weapons enchantment dumplings. Uh, any food that will be consumed regenerates 100% more vitality, but everything tastes like pierogies. Now, unfortunately, and this doesn't mean that uh, the food you eat will have a double the amount of vitality generation. The vitality gen regeneration per second stays the same, but the effect lasts double. In my opinion, this enchantment isn't that great either. There are better options. I mean, you only get a longer regeneration from food. Next up is preservation, the level 1 weapons enchantment. 
Normally, if you use the grindstone or armorer's table, it will last 15 minutes and give you bonus to armor and weapon damage. But with this enchantment, the bonuses will never expire, which is uh, kind of great. The bonuses, uh, for especially from grindstones, are nice. The problem is that, I mean, you, theoretically, you can uh, fast travel to a grindstone or armor's table every 15 minutes and get the upgrade and do not waste your enchantment slot for this enchantment. As with dumplings, this enchantment will work when you have the enchant sword equipped, but you actually do not need to fight with it. Uh, for example, you can have a silver sword enchant with preservation and fight with a steel sword that has another enchantment and this uh, uh, bonuses from grindstone and armor's table still won't expire. Next up is a level 2 weapons enchantment elation. F fatal blows dealt with your sword give you 0.1 to 0.25 adrenaline points which I think is very weak considering that normally you only fight a few monsters and <laughs> 0.2 adrenaline points that's really not a lot and if you fight a single boss this enchantment won't help you at all the next level 2 weapons enchantment rejuvenation is similar to elation but instead of a, a small po a portion of adrenaline points it will give you 25% of your stamina now i still think uh, the bonus a small bonus for a fatal blow is very weak because because you won't get it too often and normally, unless you're using a strong attack build with no Tony all, you won't have really stamina problems. Next up is the level 2 weapons enchantment severance, which is one of my favorite weapons enchantments because it increases the range of whirl by 1.1 yard and rend by 1.9 yards, which is quite a lot. Whirl and rend are very useful attacks and a longer range allows you two things. For once you'll be able to attack your enemies while staying out of the range and second of all uh, you, can, you are able to hit more enemies with one single attack. Yep. Next up is the level 3 weapons enchantment prolongation. Each unblocked blow increases potion duration time by half a second. I did a separate video on that because this at enchantment is very powerful if combined correctly. While it's not that strong with a strong attack build where the attacks do not happen that often, if you combine this attack with the world attack and uh, use the superior blizzard and the superior white truffers decoction, this um, enchantment is OP. It uh, will allow you to keep uh, up uh, the, w uh, w the white uh, ruffers decoction uh, for an infinite time, making you invulnerable. And the only problem we will have are enemies that can block you or knock you down. Otherwise, uh, you're pretty much invincible. Next up, we have a level 3 weapons enchantment, Invigoration. When at maximum vitality, any vitality regeneration turns into added damage up to 50% on your next strike. So let's say you have a normal silver sword DPS of 1980. If you take a healing potion like swallow and eat some food, every time, every few seconds, your uh, DPS will increase and you can consume that higher DPS with a strike. But after you hit an enemy, um, the uh, Silver Sword DPS will go back to normal. So normally you can heal up for a few seconds and let your uh, DPS grow, but after you hit an enemy the first time, you're back to a normal damage. So that's why I think a Kimara Decoction is very good here, because every time you hit an enemy, you're actually healing yourself up. So with every next strike, you have 
uh, always a higher DPS. You can also use Troll Decoction, which hits you up 20 points per second, but that's not really much uh, because you normally will hit your enemy every second or every few seconds, so that bonus isn't that great. One way to get very high DPS is to use the superior White Ruffer's Decoction, which will heal you up by a lot and will get you instantly the 50% damage bonus. But remember, this counts only for one strike. And with all situations with this enchantment, whenever you get hit uh, and you do not have uh, the full vitality points, you don't get any bonus at all. Another way to heal you up and get higher damage is by using the alternative Quen. The last level free weapon enchantment is replenishment. After you cast a sign an adrenal point is consumed and your next sword attack is charged with the power of that sign. Now this uh, means that you will have to have adrenaline points to be able to use the effect of this enchantment and you will consume this uh, those adrenaline points which will make uh, this enchantment not that great. I don't think casting Quen will benefit you but Casting all the other signs will benefit your next attack. For example, casting Yarden will slow down uh, the enemy that you uh, hit next. After casting Art, the next attack will push back your enemies. And after casting Axie, the next attack will uh, stun your enemy. Remember that if you do not have any adrenaline points, you cannot use this enchantment. So in a fight, you can only use it a few times. Uh, casting Igni will uh, set your enemy on fire with the next strike. One cool thing about this enchantment is that after you cast a sign, uh, your sword will glow or be on fire. Next up are chest armor enchantment. There are 14 different chest armor enchantments and the first one is heft. All equipped armor items are treated as heavy armor. I do not really think this makes too much sense. Maybe if you're using a strong attack build and you're using the bear's cool technique ability and you want some armor with higher attack power bonus or higher sign intensity bonus, you can change it to be counted as heavy armor, but overall I do not think it makes too much sense. Uh, of course this will not only enchant your um, chest armor, but also your gloves or boots will be counted as heavy armor. Next up is the level 2 armor enchantment balance and this works similar as heft but instead of changing your armor to heavy armor it changes your armor to medium armor. You could change your high resistance heavy armor uh, with this enchantment into medium armor and have the high stamina regeneration from the griffin te school technique but I think uh, there are better enchantment if you are using signs. The next one is a level 3 enchantment It and its levity. It does the same thing but it changes your armor into light armor and if you're using a, a fast attack build and only cast Quen as the only sign, it makes sense to use this because you can use high resistance heavy armor and still get all the bonuses from Cat School technique. Next up is the level 1 enchantment deflection. Armor deflects all arrows. It's a simple enchantment. And before patch 1.10, arrows didn't do a lot of damage, so it didn't make much sense. But now arrows make uh, quite a lot of damage, so this enchantment I will call slightly helpful. Next up is the level 2 enchantment protection. Whenever you enter a fight, uh, you will have Quen automatically cast without using any stamina. And I don't really think it's great. I mean, most of the times you can uh, see your enemies from far away and before you enter combat, you can just 
cast Quen and while you're out of combat you have very high stamina regeneration so you won't use it up really. Next up is a level 3 enchantment retribution gives a 30% chance of returning a portion of damage received to the attacker and from my calculation this is around 22.5% of the a damage of the attacker. Unfortunately, I do not think that's a lot. I think it's very little. Take for example the Fallen Knight crossbow out archers. They will do over 1200 damage to you and you'll only give them back 290 damage. Now in five shots they can kill you but uh, you would uh, they would actually need to hit you 300 times uh, with a bolt till they die from this enchantment. Next up are enchantment that it will improve your signs. The first one is depletion. It's a level one enchantment and hidden enemies with art reduces their stamina by 50%. Now I don't think there is a lot of benefit to having uh, the enemies reduce stamina. Uh, for uh, definitely one situation is that some enemies will uh, sprint at you and if you hit them uh, with uh, art uh, having this enchantment they uh, afterwards they probably don't have enough stamina to uh, sprint at you but otherwise I don't really think it's very helpful. Next up is entanglement a level 2 enhancement when a trap set by Yarden hits an enemy and Yarden glyph is placed at that position. This of course requires that you have upgraded your Yarden sign and have the level 2 ability that allows you to cast Yarden trap. Now when the Yarden trap hits zaps an enemy and uh, there uh, there will be a yard simple yarden sign cast where the uh, enemy was standing of course uh, since the yarn is the best against specters it's most beneficial when you fight them uh, but overall against other enemies uh, yarden is not really that strong of an uh, sign so I'll pre prefer to use enchantments that improve other signs. Next up is the level 1 enchantment usurpation. When an enemy affected by Axie dies the effect transfers to the nearest target and this is best used with the level 2 Axie ability that takes control of your enemies. So when this controlled enemy dies, it's transferred to the next nearest enemy. Even with a maxed out Axie, you cannot really hope that the enemies uh, will kill each other off. You'll have to attack the affected enemies yourself. Next up is the level 2 enchantment beguilement. Enemies affected by Axie will be affected for 2 seconds longer for each blow they land. And this of course assumes that you have the level 2 um, Axie skill to take control of the enemies. Now when the controlled enemies hit uh, an enemy they will um, increase the length of effect by 2 seconds. And normally if this build my Axie lasted uh, 18 seconds so it will give an additional 2 seconds which is not really that much. And it definitely works best with enemies that attacked very frequent like Neckers. The last Axie improving enchantment is Possession and it's a level 3 enchantment and it combines the bonuses of the uh, previous two enchantments. So not only will the effect of Axie transfer to the nearest target when the enemy affected by Axie dies, also if the affected by Axie enemy will hit an other enemy the effect will be increased uh, for two more seconds. This is one of my favorite enchantments since it improves the already strong Axie greatly. Next up are Igni improving enchantment. Ignition is the first, it's a level 1 enchantment 
and enemies set alight with Igni have a 25% chance to ignite other enemies within a 2 yard radius. This means that if you are fighting multiple enemies you have a chance of setting up a chain reaction where not only the nearest enemy will be set on fire and this is of course very good because burning enemies cannot def defend themselves. Next up is the level 2 enchantment rotation. Igni's basic attack strikes all opponents in a 360 degree radius but no longer applies the burning effect. In my opinion this enchantment is bad for you because Igni is um, very powerful because of the burning effect. Now without it the enemies aren't immobilized and can quickly kill you plus most of the damage you will get from the burning of the enemies so just the initial igni strike does very little damage furthermore it's uncool that the igni animation now doesn't show igni going in all directions the last igni improving armor enchantment is the level 3 enchantment eruption. Foes set alight by Igni explode when they die and ignite nearby foes. While ignition was helpful from the beginning of the fight, eruption is most helpful at the end of the fight when enemies are lo low level and likely to explode. Of course you have to remember that uh, the enemies will only explode when they die from the uh, effect of Igni. If you set them on fire and kill them with a sword, they won't explode anymore. Since this was the last enchantment, which enchantments should you use? Prolongation is definitely a, a very strong uh, enchantment to the point where it's OP if you use it with Whirl, the Superior White Ruffers Decoction and Superior Blizzard. But I find that place a little bit boring, so I like to use both swords for with the enchantments uh, Suverance because it gives the greater range for Whirl and Rent and this allows me to strike the enemies uh, from uh, afar. Plus I also used to uh, like uh, Possession because it um, greatly improves the already very strong axi and so you can take enemies and let them kill each other or just uh, take them over so you can kill them without any resistance. The biggest problem I see with enchantment is that while there are a lot of good uh, sword enchantments, uh, if you use a build a combat build that only uses Quen for protection and no real offensive signs, you don't really have any enchantments that will improve Quen or any other stat. So thank you for watching, if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section and I will try to answer them. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and check out my other Witcher 3 videos. Chance of an instant kill which you can see here. Another way to use the free adrenaline points is for rent. The alternative attack that you can perform while holding the strong attack button.